Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, B New, coming at you this morning. Uh, now, as you can all see, I'm in a festive mood. I'm not in a somber mood at all. And I know a lot of people out there in Lakers Nation and a lot of people that uh, are huge fans of LeBron James are feeling the heat from a bunch of haters right now. They feeling the... The, the foul words and harsh words from a bunch of haters right now. But I'm here to tell y'all this morning, just chill. That's, we're going to say hashtag just chill, man, because everything going to be all right. Like, uh, I think Kobe Bryant said it best. Uh, they don't hate on the good ones. They don't hate on the good ones. That's what Kobe said. They don't hate on the good ones. They hate on the great ones. You understand what I'm saying? So if they not hating on you, you're not doing something right. I mean, you might need to grind a little bit harder. I mean, you might need to uh, go back to the drawing board a little bit more. But anyway, let's get right down to it. So uh, before the game, and I, I apologize because I really should have made a video yesterday for all my, uh, for everybody that's out there who uh, watches the show on a consistent basis to let you all know it would have been a perfect opportunity for you to make some money because when I looked at the line yesterday and I saw that they were giving the Lakers nine points, I said, damn, they're giving the Lakers nine points? I was going to say, uh, well, give me Utah minus the nine because I knew Utah was going to cover and win by more than nine points. That's easy money. That's easy money. And I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a uh, LeBron fan and everybody know, but when it comes to money, you got to put your money we're on the team that you know that's going to win. And see, that's like you can bet on the team, and even though you're pulling for that team, but you bet against them because, you know, facts is facts. And anybody who know the game of basketball knew that without Anthony Davis and without Dennis Schroeder, the way that the Lakers team is currently constructed was not going to beat the Utah Jazz. So I don't know if anybody's been paying attention to the Utah Jazz, but they have. Uh, they're breaking records in three-pointers. Uh, they got the best record that they've ever had uh, in the first 30 games in the history of the Utah Jazz. So we're talking about some of the great Utah Jazz teams of old and even going back to the 90s uh, when you had uh, John Stockton and, and, and Carl Malone and uh, uh, Russell and, and some of the other great players that they had when they went to the finals back-to-back, -back, uh, but they ended up losing to the Chicago Bulls. So let's just let's just not ever get that twisted up. So think about this for a minute. That the Utah Jazz had the best record than than they've ever had in the first 30 games. So that's a hell of a team. And I remember about they started off, I want to say four and four before they won the next 20, 21 out of 22 or something like that. So uh I remember Steve Kerr a couple of weeks ago had said, man, this jazz team really reminds me of uh of the golden state team that we want that we started winning the championships with prior to kd because they have so many people that can create their own shot and they got so many people who can knock down three pointers so the personnel for the and then you got a great point guard like mike, mike conley who also plays on both ends of the floor who's always snub for all-star appearances, never got one. So, you know, I'm Grit and Grind Nation, too, and I know a lot about some Mike Conley. And when he first went to the Jazz, I wished him well because I knew that would be great, especially when you saw Donovan Mitchell come on. So when Donovan Mitchell came on, and I mean, I would beg to say that they got the best backcourt in the NBA. I know a lot of people are going to say Dame and McCullough, and I know a lot of people are going to say, uh, uh, of course, the Brooklyn Nets, which, <laughs> hey, I would say them too. You got Kyrie and you have uh, James Harden, then that's, that's a big difference. But the point I'm trying to make is the Lakers are not in trouble, y'all. They injured. Did you actually think that uh, the Lakers, minus their starting point guard, Dennis Schroeder, and minus their starting power forward and Anthony Davis, who both giving you what? Schroeder giving you 15 points a game. Anthony Davis giving you 23, 24 a game. So you're already talking about that's almost 40 points worth of offense that needs to be made up. But see, when you talk about a player like Dennis Schroeder, you're also talking about somebody that's capable of distributing the basketball and getting others involved. So when I saw the matchup, if you go look at the matchup and you see the personnel for the Utah Jazz and you see the personnel for the Los Angeles Lakers, then you pretty much know what was going to happen. Now, granted, 
that's just the way it is because the way the Lakers are currently constructed, LeBron James is not surrounded by a lot of shooters. And I don't know if they've lost their confidence because KCP is capable of hitting threes, but he's been terrible lately. He cannot, he couldn't hit a, a ocean. Uh, Caruso, he capable of hitting threes, but the same thing, he's lost all confidence. I don't know if they're just putting too much pressure on themselves or what it is they're doing. But if you go back and you look at the numbers, I mean, the, the Lakers, and this is another thing about Frank Vogel, you're not, you're not a great offensive coach. Now, the Lakers are still the number one defensive team in the league, so the Lakers are getting it done on the defensive end of the floor, so you would hope it would have been close. I thought they was going to lose probably about 16 or 17 points, but 30, that's just sad. But once they decided to sit LeBron James, once the league got too big and he didn't even play any in the fourth quarter and he took his break in the middle of the third and you saw he wasn't coming back and they were just going to go ahead and rest him, I thought it was actually a good idea that these young boys get out here and get their feet wet a little bit more and learn how to play without LeBron so they can get some practice in against another high-caliber team so they can learn how to penetrate and get to the basket and do other things. See, if you go back and look at the numbers, and then that's what I'm saying. Frank Vogel still got them shooting threes. If, you, if you're if you not consistently making them and you constantly shoot 20% from three for the game, then stop shooting them. Maybe find something else to do. Then maybe you wouldn't get your ass beat by that much. But if you go back and look at it, I want to say the Jazz was like 22 out of 48. 22 out of 48. So they're knocking them down, but they're taking a lot of them, just like Golden State did. Like uh, Clarkson, I want to say, he was 4 out of 10. That's 40%, but he took 10 attempts. So he keeps shooting them because he got the confidence and he's know he's, he's capable of shooting them and doing what he got to do. So that's the difference between the personnel of the Utah Jazz and that of the Lakers because the Lakers only shoot like 20-some percent. They shot 8 out of 33. They shot 8 out of 33. So if they shot 8 out of 33, then that's only 24%. That's only 24% in threes. You only made eight threes the whole game. Then why in the world are you still shooting threes? Why are you still shooting threes if you aren't making them? And that's the thing. And then Marcus Gasol, he shot 40% from three last night. He hit like uh, uh, two out of five. So at least he's trying to spread the floor. And everybody want to come down on Marcus Gasol, but let me tell y'all something. That's another thing that I noticed that Coach Vogel is not doing right. So last night, you got Marcus Gasol against Rudy Gobert. Now, I know at Mark's age that Rudy Gobert is a better player than Marcus Gasol. I'm not going to sit up there and get that twisted up. I know he is. But when you spread Mark out, because Rudy Gobert doesn't shoot threes. So I understand on some plays, you might want to spread him out and, and hit a three and get LeBron James room to operate in the paint. But when you spread the floor and you leak Mark Gasol out, then when they're rotating, Rudy Gobert is not running out to the three-point line to defend Mark Gasol. You know what Rudy Gobert is doing? Rudy Gobert is going to get that rebound. So when you do that, then you're lacking the rebounding that you need. So I would like to see sometimes, I think Marcus All on one play, he had his way with Gobert down there and he could he could score two. Marcus All got fancy footwork where he is capable of getting you an easy two. So I wouldn't mind seeing why not draw him up a few plays in the post. Instead, of, if you're going to keep missing all these damn threes, go ahead and draw up a few plays in the post for Mark and let him take it one-on-one -on -one with Rudy Gobert. And I'm pretty sure if you give it to Mark and you give him 12 shots, down in the post, then he's going to make probably 40% of them, or 50% of them. And I know Rudy Gobert is a great defender, but Mark Gasol, I'm telling you with his footwork, is more than capable of making the shot. He's more than capable of scoring down in the post. So I'm just saying, and I know a lot of you are going to say, man, what's with you and Mark Gasol? And Mark Gasol, sorry, you need to trade him. Listen, I understand that Mark Gasol is not the best center, but Mark Gasol is not the Lakers' problem. Trust what I'm telling you. So if you go back and look, I'm going to tell you right now the Lakers problem. So if you compare this team, let's just say, let's just say you had last year's team. If you had last year's team, right? If you had last year's team and, and instead of this year's team and Anthony Davis was to get hurt, then it would be different because last year, let's just see. Okay. You had Rondo who was a playmaker and a facilitator, right? Then you had Avery Bradley, who, and both of them great on the defensive end, by the way. So then you had Avery Bradley, uh, who was a great defender, 
and was more than capable of shooting. I don't know if y'all remember his performance against the Clippers last year, but he's more than capable of shooting the ball and he's capable of creating his own shot, okay? So if you're missing Rondo, you're missing Avery Bradley, and you're missing uh, Danny Green. Now, Danny Green was capable, of, he was a great, great defender as well. He is a great defender and also was more than capable of hitting open threes. And another thing about Danny Green, he is capable of getting to the hole himself. Now, he might not have had the best vision as far as once he gets to the hole, how to uh, kick it out for somebody else, but, you know, and create for others. He's not really a creator for others, but he can create his own shot. So what the Lakers sorely, sorely missing right now, uh, especially with Schroeder out. Now, if Schroeder was in, I think the game would have been a lot closer. And then you don't let it get out of hand. And people say, oh, man, Sch Schroeder, Schroeder, y'all act like Schroeder are all star. Listen, he was the sixth man of the year. He's a very proven point guard in this league. He can create his own shot. He can get others involved. He can take some of the pressure off LeBron James. So, yes, not having Schroeder is a big key component to uh, factoring in to the loss. So if you're out two starters, I want to know any team in the league right now. Let's just go around and, and take off two starters and then let them play the number one team in the league, and then you tell me what the result's gonna be. You know, you tell me what the results are gonna be. So the thing about it is, don't panic, Lakers. Don't panic. And just like LeBron said, we're gonna bounce back, so it's not it's not a big deal is what I'm saying. Now, if the Lakers had Anthony Davis and Dennis Schroeder and they got their ass beat like that, then I would say panic. Then I would say panic, but they didn't. So why why would you panic like that? You understand what I'm saying? So if you really think about it, the Lakers are not in any trouble whatsoever. LeBron James just got good rest. They're going to play against Portland Friday night. And uh, right now, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're going to rally that locker room and they're going to beat the uh, Portland Trailblazers on Friday night. I'm going to go ahead and pick that right now before the spread even come out. Uh, because these shots got to start falling for some of these players. But the thing is, the Utah Jazz, they got four different players who can not just knock down. They got five or six different players who are capable of knocking down threes. They got plenty of players who are capable of knocking down the threes, but they do not have, uh, but they also have four players who can also penetrate to the basket. And these players can penetrate to the basket as well as uh, create for others. So they almost have like four point guards who can do all of this, unlike the Lakers. So if you look, one last thing before I get out of here is, the Lakers have four. The Lakers have four players. Who uh, the Lakers have four players. The Jazz have four players who can create and who can score for everybody else. Whereas the Lakers only have one right now, and that's LeBron James. And that was the difference in the basketball game. And the Lakers only had two players in double digits last night. And Morris only had twelve, so he barely touched double digits. So whereas the Jazz had five or six players in double digits last night. So you're talking about a well-rounded team, but. Anyway, y'all, uh, hate to cut it short, but I got some business I need to take care of. So just remember, keep blessing those haters and don't even worry about it. Right on to the real and much love to them haters. You know I'm out.